Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Early in the morning, just as day is dawning, he picks up all the post bags in his van. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Everybody knows his bright red van. All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them. Maybe you can never be sure there'll be knock ring. Letters through your door. <laughs> postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat, and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing, and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really It was a windy day in Greendale. Hang on, Jess. It's a difficult job driving in this wind. Help! I can't see! Alf Thompson was nearly blown off his feet. Look out! <laughs> hmm, how are we going to get past this lot? said Pat. Oh, hello, Jess. Hello, Pat. It was Peter Fogg on the other side. Hey, this wretched wind, he said. Blowing trees down all over the place. Don't worry, Pat. I'll soon shift it. I'll nip down the forestry place and borrow their machine. No wonder it blew over. It's rotten. Peter was soon back with the log lifter and a power saw. Now then, we'll soon cut our way through. Stand back, these things don't half go. I'll just get these branches out of the way, Peter. Then, let's see if we can move the pieces. Phew, it's warm work.
Hmm, should be able to get through there, said Pat. Then went for his van. But it had gone. Oh! Where could it be? There it was, safe and sound. It was just along the road, next to Sam's mobile shop. I moved your van down the road, said Sam. I could see your new paint was going to get scratched with all these branches flying about. Thanks, said Pat. It is smart, isn't it? Royal crown and all. Cheerio, Sam. Cheerio! Thanks, Peter. Cheerio! We'll have to get a move on now, Jess. Now what? Ouch! My hat! Come here. Oh, no. I'll never catch it now. It's that cable again. I'll soon fix that. There was nobody about at the village school. Have they all been blown away? The children were out enjoying the wind. But the wind wanted to deliver the letters. in all directions. The children helped to find them. One letter was stuck in a tree. Careful! It would be an airmail letter. What a day! Hold them tightly. I think they're all air letters today. Bill Thompson took them to the headmaster. And Pat waved goodbye.
Pat was blown about the valley all morning with his letters and parcels. It was almost the end of his windy round when he saw a flying towel. It was one of Granny Dryden's. He went to help her catch her washing. Oh, Pat, she said, this wind's terrible. You are a dear. I'd never have caught it all by myself. Look, there's more over there. Now we've got my washing, what about your hat? It blew off miles away and sailed down a stream. Good gracious, said Granny Dryden. Ted Glenn said he'd hooked a postman's hat out of the lake. I didn't see how it could be yours. Look, he popped it on the old scarecrow to dry. It looks like mine. It is mine. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Scarecrow. Time to blow home, said Pat. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Boom, 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 boom. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Just as day is dawning, he picks up all the post bags in his van. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Everybody knows his bright red van. All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them. Maybe you can never be sure there'll be knock, ring letters through your door. <laughs> postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Ooh, another nasty day, said Pat. Jess looked out at the rain. He hated wet days. What a day! Wet letters, wet everything. It was still raining when Pat reached the village post office. What dreadful weather! Just look at these letters. Imagine them getting so wet just being posted. It's like a wet wash day. <laughs> I see what you mean. Never mind, they'll soon dry. You'd best watch out for floods up the valley. There's more rain forecast, you know. Mm, don't you worry, Mrs. Goggins. The post will get through. Oh, it stopped raining. Cheerio. Pat was on his way.
what a dismal day it was. Some people still had lights on indoors. What had happened to Peter Fogg? Pat stopped to find out. It's this blooming rain. My old tractor's bogged down in the bottom meadow. It's half flooded down there. Then I went and fell in the mud. <laughs> you look as if you've had a bath in it. I just about have. I'm off home for some dry clothes, then I'll get the new tractor to pull the old one out. Good luck, said Pat. I think it's fairing up now. Cheerio. When Pat arrived at the school, some of the children were looking out to see if the rain had stopped. He was surprised to see Charlie Pringle running out for the letters instead of Bill Thompson. Hello, Charlie. Where's Bill, then? He's off school today. They say there's flooding up at Thompson Ground. He'll be helping his dad get the sheep in. Well, don't drop the letters. They've already had one wetting. <laughs> it's nice to see someone enjoying the rain, thought Pat. Watch it. Cheerio! At Greendale Farm, he saw Peter Fogg again. He'd changed his clothes. Here, Pat. Come and have a look at this. He showed Pat his new tractor with its bulldozer blade. This'll shift anything, he said. Hm, bet it would, said Pat. Oh, here's your mail. Oh, ta. Bye. The Reverend Timms was having trouble with the rain, too. just and the unjust. Look out! I'll ask Ted Glenn to bring his ladders and have a look at that roof, said Pat. Bye. Farewell, Pat. Sam Waldron was just along the road.
Take it steady, Pat, said Sam. The roads are flooding up the valley. <laughs> the old van will get me through, said Pat. I'll just take a bunch of bananas. The wife loves them. Thank you. Thanks, Pat. Jess was glad to stay in the van to keep out of the wet. They were getting into the hills when they saw Mrs. Thompson standing in the road, waving to make them stop. Hello, Mrs. Thompson. What's going on? said Pat. There are terrible floods in the top fields, Pat. And the water's brought tons of earth down and blocked the road. Come and see. Oh, dear me, said Pat. Can't we telephone the village for help? No, the lines are down. Well, can't we walk round it? No, oh, it's too dangerous with these floods. And you could be buried if the land started to slip again. Here comes Alf. He's going to try to get through with his tractor. Do you think you can do it? said Pat. Oh, I'll have a jolly good try. Off he went at top speed. And got stuck. It's no good, said Alf. We'll have to get help somehow. Then Bill came with his model aeroplane. I know, he said. We can put a message on my plane and I can fly it across to Greendale Farm to get help. It's radio controlled, see? What a good idea. Clever lad. We'll send an airmail letter. So Pat scribbled a note. S-O-S. That'll do it. He tied it to the plane with a bit of Alf's binder twine. Good luck. Let's hope it gets through. Oh, I think he'll manage it. He's a clever lad. He built it himself, you know. Bill started the engine. And off it flew. Away she goes. That's better than a van. <laughs> I wonder if I could swap mine for a helicopter. It seemed ages since the plane had gone. Pat was just thinking it must have crashed when he heard a powerful engine coming up the road on the other side of the blockage. It was Peter Fogg on his new tractor with the bulldozer blade. Got your message! Mind your back! Oh, oh. waved Sam Waldron through. There was just enough room.
Ted Glenn was mending a wall for Mr. Pottage. Pat had remembered something. Can you go and have a look at the church roof, Ted? The Reverend's got the church full of buckets. <laughs> I'll pop along when I've finished this wall. Blooming rain. It makes no end of work. Miss Hubbard was on her way to choir practice. I'd turn back if I were you, said Pat. <laughs> or you might have to swim home. Swim, said Miss Hubbard. It'll take more than a drop of rain to stop me. And on she went. I'll be on my way too, said Pat. Cheerio. As Pat wound his way along the valley, it looked like rain again. But there was a warm fireside to look forward to. <laughs> when all the letters had been delivered. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Black and white cat Early in the morning Just as day is dawning He picks up all the post bags in his van Postman Pat, Postman Pat Postman Pat and his black and white cat All the birds are singing And the day is just beginning Pat feels he's a really happy man Everybody knows his bright red van All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them Maybe you can never be sure There'll be knock ring letters through your door <laughs> Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat all the birds are singing, and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. It had been wild and windy in Greendale. A lot of branches had fallen from the trees. Some had broken the telephone wires. Dear me, said Pat, that's a nuisance. There'll be a fair number of telephones out of action now. Oh, I wonder if the Reverend Tim's kept that stamp for me. Better pop in and see him. I hope he remembered. Hello, Reverend. I just popped in to see if you kept that Australian stamp yesterday. Of course, Pat. Just the thing for your collection. Waste not, want not. Thanks. But where are you off to, Reverend? London, to meet my sister Elsie. She's flying over from Australia. Haven't seen her for years. Here's that stamp. Thanks. Such a nuisance. I'll have to visit everyone to cancel church meetings while I'm away. Such a bother. With a train to catch, too. If only the phone was working. It's this wind we've been having. It's brought the wires down. Well, I'll just have to hurry. The train goes in an hour. Hope you get round in time, Reverend. Cheerio. Have a good trip. Oh, 
Hello, Bud. Hat called at the post office for the letters. Morning, Mrs. Goggins. I'm not late, am I? Not really, but I thought you might have trouble getting through, what with all these trees blown down. Pat told Mrs. Goggins all about the Reverend Tim's letter, his trip to London, and his telephone being out of action. E, it's a bad job, isn't it? <coughs> My phone's working anyway, said Mrs. Goggins. Hello, Greendale Post Office here. Who is it? Elsie Timms. Urgent message for the Reverend Timms. Flight diverted to Manchester. You'll come on to Greendale by car. Yes, I'll ask our postman to dash over and tell the Reverend not to go to London after all. I've got the message. Tell her I'm on my way. Bye, Pat. I hope you're in time. Bye. Hold tight, Jess. You're going to see some pretty hot driving now. Look out, Ted! Looks as though the Reverend's gone. I'll leave a note in case he calls back before he goes to the station. I might even catch up with him at Miss Hubbard's. Yes, we can take a shortcut along the back roads. It was a bit rough. Oh no! Now who's left that there? We'll never get past it. There's only one thing for it now. Come on, Jess. We'll have to walk it. all the hurry. Morning, Miss Hubbard. I'm trying to catch up with the Reverend. Have you seen him? Oh, he went a few moments ago. He's in a hurry too. He wants to catch the London train. Oh no! He mustn't go to London. I've got an urgent message for him. He did say he had to call at Ted Glenn's first. You might catch him there. You can borrow my bicycle. Go on. Thanks, Miss Hubbard. I'll try anything once. Come on, Jess. Hold tight. Oh, dear. I couldn't do this every day. Ooh. Oh, dear. Oh, 
Oh, I'll be glad when this is over. Oh, this is hard work. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hello, Pat. <laughs> Whatever are you doing? You all right? I'm trying to catch up with the Reverend. Oh, you're too late. The Reverend's gone. Uh, but he said he'd call on Granny Dryden before he catches his train. Oh, no. Just look at that front wheel. It looks very peculiar. Leave it to me. I'll fettle it. You can borrow these roller skates. I've just mended them. You'll fairly move we've got these on. Well, I said I'd try anything, and I must catch the Reverend before he catches his train. Thanks, Ted. Here we go again. Oh, oops! You're doing fine, Pat. It's not so good uphill. How do you stop? Whoa! Whoa! Hey! Whoa! Way! Whoa! Ooh. Meanwhile, Sam was taking the Reverend to the train. I thought I saw Pat dive over that gate, said Sam. Hello, Sam. Ah, Reverend. Thank goodness you haven't gone to London. Pat told the Reverend all about his sister's phone message, saying she was coming straight to Greendale. Lord bless us, what a good thing you caught me in time. There's no need to go to London now. Thank you, Pat. Here comes Peter Fogg, said Sam. We'd better get out of the way. Goodbye. Peter was following Sam's van along the road. Hello, Pat. Sorry I blocked the road with me trailer. I'll give you a ride back to your van. Thanks, Pete. I couldn't walk it. Here's the little story of a very special cat Who's the friend and good companion of a certain postman Travelling through the country with his good friend by his side Pat knows his cat just likes to be there For he always likes to ride through the beautiful valley And its lovely countryside as he sits up by the window and the views go gliding by. Jess is his cat. Jess is his cat. Jess is his cat. And it's always been like that. And it's always been like that. Always been like that. Always been like that. Ever since that he was given as a tiny little kitten Ever since that he was given as a tiny little kitten All the folks in Greendale like to wave and stop to chat For they always like to see Pat as he goes by with his cat Through the beautiful valley and its lovely countryside As he sits up by the window and the views go gliding Is his cat. Jess is his cat, and it's always been like that, and it's always been like that. All right, but yes, thanks, Pete. Cheerio.
Now, where did I put my pen? I must have left it at the vicarage. The Reverend Timms was carrying his sister's luggage into the house. I made it. Thanks to you, Pat, I got back just before my sister arrived. Oh, and I found your pen on my doorstep. Thanks, Reverend. I hope your sister enjoys her visit. Bye, Pat. Goodbye, Jess. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Boom, 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 boom. But Granny Dryden's getting her pension at the post office. And uh, ten first-class stamps, please, Mrs. Goggins. Oh, look, I do love the village fate. Do you know I've never missed one since I was a girl. Mind, it's not like the old times. Oh, no, brass bands and drums, trumpets... Oh, but I hope there'll be some sort of music. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm sure. My old dad, you know, he played the... Bless me, what did he play? I know he made a lovely sound, something big and boomy-like. I wonder whatever became of it. Here you are, Granny Dryden. Well, never mind. Now, Mrs. Goggins, would you kindly ask Pat to be sure to pop in this afternoon? I will, I will. That attic of mine. You know, there's all sorts of things up there. I've been wanting to get it cleared out ever since that old chimney pot blew up. Hello, Granny Dryden. Morning, Peter. Hello, Pat. Hello, Peter. Look at this. I thought you'd given up that old guitar. Nay, nee, I'm off to Bancaster to learn how to play it properly like. You never know, I might get on the telly with it. <laughs> it would be nice to play something. Something big and boomy. You're sounding cheerful today, said Mrs Goggins. It's the music in the air, said Pat. Music, said Miss Hubbard. That's what we need for a good fate. Now then, Reverend, do you think that old record player of yours could keep going long enough to churn out a few jolly old tunes? Oh, I think Ted'll be able to mend it. He's kept it going all these years. Oh, Pat, I nearly forgot. Granny Dryden asked if you'd pop in. Righto. Bye, Pat. I expect she's got something for the fate. Bye, all. Bye, Pat. It's time for Pat to be on his way.
Morning, Granny Dryden. You've got two letters today. Oh, Pat, I'm glad you've come. There's some things in the attic and they'll be just right for the fate. You know, some old hats and dressmakers' dummies and things. Could you climb up and have a look? Me old legs, you know, they're too wobbly for that ladder. They'll be there somewhere. Now, mind how you go. Let's have a look. Up we go. Do be careful, Pat. Hmm. It's a bit dark up here. I won't be able to see a thing. Hmm. Where do I start? What's in here? Ah, a torch. And it works. Right now, down to business. Oh dear, what a jumble. Just like my granddad's hat. Must have been here since I was a lad. Hmm, stylish. <laughs> I like that. What's over here? A chair. A coffee pot and kettle. Boxes and tubs. I say, this looks promising. Oh, it's uh, some sort of a hump bar thing, I think. It's too dusty to blow. Now then, better get this locked down. Look out below. Whoops. Oh, heck! Here, Patchy gave me such a fright. I thought it was my old dad for a minute. You know, off to play in the Greendale Brass Band. Do you know you're the very image of him? Now I remember, Pat, it was the tuba, that's what he played. I tell you what, you know you're welcome to it. Why don't you learn to play it? You know, we could have a new band in Greendale. Real live music for the fate. Well, uh, I might do that. Seems the right sort of size for me, big and boomy. Better than that little old bugle I had when I was a lad in the Scouts. Thanks, Granny Dryden. Very kind of you. Needs a number eight spinner, I should think. Oh, he's back. Mm, this filter needs cleaning. What do you reckon to this, Ted? <laughs> Stop! Well, Ted. I reckon it wants a spot of something before it gives me headache, but. Let's try a drop of oil. <laughs> it's good stuff, this. It's a bit overpowered, Pat. Here, try some of these rags down its throttle. Thanks, Ted. I'd best be on my way now. Bye, Pat. Oh, dear. She won't start, Ted. Nee, it's no good, Pat. I can't mend it just now. It needs a new plug. Oh, dear, Jess. How on earth are we going to deliver all our letters? I'll tell you what, Pat. You could take the post bus out. I can give you a lift into the village to pick it up. I think you'd better sit in back with that thing. I can't risk getting a blast from it when I'm driving. Young Jess can keep me company. Are you with us, Pat? 
Ready. And off they went. But Pat just couldn't resist having another toot on the tube. Oh! Ouch! What was that? Poor PC Selby. He ended up in a heap on the road. Pat was so busy puffing and blowing that he didn't see him. They passed Alf Thompson on his tractor. Ouch! What was that? Sounds like a tire blowing. What a noise! Help! Road hog! Here we are, and a good thing too, Pat. You and your blooming tuber. <laughs> Shouldn't be allowed to make a noise like that. Terrible rumpus. Pat was on his way again. At Thompson Ground, Jess thought he would stay somewhere quiet. But there was no one about. So Pat thought he'd have just one more try to get music from his tuba. <laughs> What's going on out here? What was that terrible noise? Sorry, Dorothy. It was only me trying to make music. Music, Pat? It sounded more like a bomb going off. I never heard the likes of it. Dear me, there must be somewhere I can practice without frightening everyone. enough here. Nobody about. Mm, nice and shady. <sighs> Just imagine if I could really, really could play the tuba. We could have a great time making music Like the old days with the village band I would practice every day So I could join and play And I'd try to make a very lovely sound I'm so lucky that I found this lovely tune now I've got a chance to try my hand With my practice every day I'd soon be proud to say That I can make a really lovely, really proper sound Putting up the music, we must get to know the score Think what we can play Oh, our music will be sure to have a beat it would make a sound Sure to give a richer sound No mistake would make the sound complete It's lucky that I found this lovely tube. Now I've got a chance to try my hand With my practice every day I'd soon be proud to say That I can make a really lovely, really proper sound I'll try to make a really lovely, really proper song. Phew, I'm a 
must have dropped off. Now then, let's have one more go at this tube. Miss Hubbard was busy in her garden. Oh! Oh dear! My prize blooms! What was that? Morning, Miss Hubbard. A parcel for you. Did you hear that dreadful noise, Pat? What do you think it was? Um, well, <laughs> I couldn't rightly say, Miss Hubbard. Uh, I'll have to dash. Lots of tube, I mean, letters today. Bye. Well, I never in all my days... Later that evening, PC Selby was out and about making inquiries. He called at the church. Evening, Reverend. I wonder if you can help me with my inquiries. It's about these strange noises. There have been reports from all over Greendale. Some folks think it might be intruders from outer space. Even I, an officer of the law, was thrown from my bike by a loud noise and a vibration in the air. Um, yes, officer. This requires some thought. You know what the Bible says, I suppose? Make a loud noise and rejoice. Dear heavens, what's that? That's it, Reverend. Dreadful, I'd call it. I'll go and investigate. Stay here, Reverend, and if I'm not back in five minutes, allow me to join you, officer. Now, Reverend, this is a job for the constabulary. Oh, but I insist. Two heads are better than one. And besides, I know my way around the churchyard in the dark. Now, Reverend, we must go quietly or we'll never catch it. Lord, defend us. Careful, Reverend. We're close. Maybe I should fetch help. No time for that. Aha! I can see the culprit. A mysterious shape in the gloom. Look, over there. Good heavens, it's Pat. Pat? Hello, Reverend. Hello, PC Selby. What's all this about, Pat? Well, it's, it's, it's me tuba. Most commendable. He wants to make music. Oh, yeah, but you didn't fall off your bike, did you? I'll have a word with Major Forbes. He can teach you, Pat. He played something like it in the army. It's time to get ready for the fate. Ted Glenn's fixing the bunting. Pat's giving him a hand. Everybody helped. PC Selby came to keep an eye on things. He soon had his hands full. Whatever are these dummies for, Pat? They're for the knock the hat off stall. As well as helping with the preparations for the fate, Pat had his rounds to do. There were some letters for Thompson Ground. Dorothy was making jam to sell at the fate. Morning, Mrs. Thompson. Uh, I'll put these letters here. Bye. Bye, Pat. And in between, he had his tuba lessons at Major Forbes. Ready now? Oh, one, two, three. Good man. At last it's time for the fate. Pat's collecting the children from the school. Not forgetting the teacher, Mr Pringle. 
It'll be a real squash. Roll up. Three balls for five B. Try your luck. Knock all the hats off and win a prize. Come on, Charlie Pringle, have a go. Right you are. Off. Off. I won, I won. First prize and all. Oh, uh, thanks. Did you hear that dreadful noise? I think the old record player's given up the ghost, Reverend. Let's just check these leads. Hmm, looks all right. This one seems okay, Ted. It's your old valves, Reverend. They've gone pop. And you can't get this type now. Then that's the end of the music. Oh, but we've always had music at the fete. Ever since I was a young lass and won the club dance competition. Well, this won't play again, that's for sure. I don't know what else we can do. Hold on. I've got an idea. Uh, Miss Hubbard, uh, could I have a word? I wonder where they're off to. Heading for Miss Hubbard's? Yes, that's where Pat stopped. And here's Peter Fogg on his motorbike. Peter's giving them a hand. What's this for? It's for the fate, said Pat. Mind how you go, Pat. How about bringing your guitar and joining in? He champion, said Peter. The piano jangled a bit on the way back. What's happening? Look, a piano. Gently now. Uh, oops. Oh, do be careful. It's a good job it's on wheels. Stop! That'll do. Here's Peter with his guitar. All right, Major. Good man. Here's an A. Could I just borrow one of these? Thank you so much. All ready now? Ready when you are, Major. By the right. Quick. March. Um, I mean, uh, all together now. Uh, one, two, three. Mind of the days when I was a lass. <laughs> Isn't it just that? Thank you. 
Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Early in the morning, just as day is dawning, he picks up all the post bags in his van. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Early one morning, Jess arrived just in time to be let in with the milk. Hello, Jess. Just in time for breakfast. Julian was waiting for the milk, and Pat wanted a little drop in his tea. But Sarah didn't forget Jess. Time to be getting a move on, said Pat. I wonder what sort of day it's going to be. Let's see what the old barometer says. Oh dear, just look at that. It's pointing to snow. Now then, let's have a look at the sky. <laughs> Not a cloud. Pat tapped the barometer just to make sure. That's what I thought it said. Snow. Great. Snow? You mark my words, said Pat. We'll have snow today. I've never known my barometer to get it wrong. Snow, said Sarah again. Never in this world. There's not a cloud in the sky. Snow, said Julian. I don't mind. We're going on a nature walk this afternoon. It'll be more fun with a bit of snow. I'd better take some extra sandwiches, just in case. We'd better tell Mr Pringle. It might not happen, said Sarah. Now off you go, or you'll be late. It was cold outside, even though the sun was shining. Pat hurried along to the post office. Ted Glenn had his scarf on, a sure sign that winter was on the way. Morning, Pat. Morning, Ted. Morning, Mrs Goggins. Brrr, by gum, it's cold today. Morning, Pat. The post is none too hot either. I reckon it's going to get colder. My barometer was pointing to snow this morning. Snow? Oh, dearie me, not already. Surely not snow. Such a nice sunny day. Now, what was George saying when he popped in with the eggs? He had the radio on in his van. I'm sure they said it was going to be cold but dry today. Not a word about snow. These folks on the radio, what do they know about the weather in Greendale? Now then, my old barometer, I've never known it to be wrong. Jess had found something to play with. Pat and Mrs Goggins were too busy to notice what had happened to the string. Now, that's for the village. I'll just tie it. Oh, now where's that string? It was here a minute ago. Um, is this it? Well, I think it is, but what's happened to my nice, neat ball of string? That cat can sense when snow's on the way. Come on, Jess. It looks as if a whirlwind's been at it, never mind snow. Him and his cat. Pat was on his way. Morning, Miss Hubbard. Have you got your snowshoes ready? Snowshoes? Whatever are you talking about, Pat? We'll not be seeing snow this side of Christmas. Oh, don't be so sure. My old barometer... Oh, poo to your barometer. I go by the TV. Well, mind how you go. There was a parcel for Dr Gilbertson. Ready for the snow, Doctor, said Pat. Plenty of plasters and cough mixture, eh? Snow, said Dr Gilbertson. What's all this about snow, Pat? It's a lovely sunny day and I always have a good stock of medicine to hand. You never know when you need it. My old barometer says it's going to snow today. Oh, Pat, I'd rather go by the Met Office. More scientific. They have computers, you know. Anyway, look at the sky, you and your barometer. 
I don't suppose it's the snow that chewed the corner of his parcel. Oh, well, um, it's when the weather's on the turn. Catch, you know, very sensitive. It's not too badly chewed, is it? Urgent letters. Gotta be off. Cheerio, Doctor. Morning, Bat. Lovely day. Morning, Alf. Have you got your stores in? Stores, Pat? What stores? Winter stores. In case you get cut off in the snow. But there isn't any snow, Pat. Not a flake. The man in the paper said it was set fine for two weeks. Oh, thanks, Pat. <laughs> That's not what my barometer says this morning. Now, where has that cat got to? I saw something streak across the yard. It's not like your Jess to do that. Jess? Jess? What are you doing up there, Jess? Hello, Pat. Hello, Dorothy. Now, hasn't your Jess been stuck up enough trees in his time? When will he learn? He knows things we don't know. Come on, Jess. Oh, he's got a funny way of showing it. Pat was on his way again. Next stop was Granny Dryden's. Morning! Morning, Pat. Lovely day for the time of year. Unseasonal, I'd say. Mind you, it was never like this when I was a girl. Come November, the snow would be coming down like feathers. We were cut off for weeks. We couldn't get to school, you know. You mark my words. We'll have snow today. Well, mind how you go. Bye. Bye, Pat. I don't know, Jess. Nobody seems to believe in my old barometer anymore. I'm not sure I do. But they can't say I didn't warn them. Hey, nothing like a spot of woodwork. Hmm. Better take this end off. Morning, Ted. Hello, Pat. Ted, you've not let your stove go out, have you? I was just looking forward to a good warm-up. <laughs> I'm too busy to bother with it, said Ted. Besides, it's like a spring day today. You get warm doing a bit of sawing and that. I'd get it going now if I were you. There's a real cold snap on the way. If you'd seen my barometer this morning... I've never known it to be wrong. Nay, Pat, that's old-fashioned stuff. It's best if you leave that sort of thing to the experts. I listen to the radio. Hmm. I don't know about all these new-fangled knick-knacks. Give me my grand's barometer any time. Pat! Hello, Sam. <laughs> Pat arrived at the village school, just as Mr Pringle was setting out with the children. Morning, Mr Pringle. I hope you're not going far. There's snow on the way, you know. Well, don't worry, Pat. We'll be as safe as the letters in your bag. 
You know what the scouts say. Be prepared. Besides, here's the Pencaster Gazette local weather report. Set fair to the weekend. Well, you couldn't ask better than that. That's not what my barometer says. It says snow. We well, I promise we'll be really careful. We'll just go up the teeniest hill, no further than Birkhow Barn at the most. Well, mind how you go. Uh, it makes you wonder, Jess. There again, I could be wrong. Morning, Pat. Morning, Reverend. Doing a spot of sweeping up the leaves. Well, no, Pat. It's this sand. Makes such a mess, gets everywhere. There was I thinking there was snow on the way. Then, bless us all, the wind turned, and out came the sun. The good Lord smiles upon us at mysterious times. I do hope you're right, Reverend. I'd best be on my way. Cheerio! Hmm, it certainly is a mystery. Mm, you never know. Mind, that wind's getting up. And here come the clouds. Hello, Pat. Afternoon, Mrs. Pottage. There's a parcel for you today. Thanks, Pat. I'd best not open it. I promised to meet the twins on their way back from... Oh, Pat, look! Snow at last. My dear old barometer was right after all. We'd both best be on our way before it gets really bad. And there's the ancient oak and the willow. And when the cold weather comes, the little creatures will begin the long winter sleep. I wouldn't mind staying in bed for the winter, said Tom. Mr Pringle. And over in the meadow, the swift hare. Remember to put that in your nature diaries. Mr. Pringle, look. And here we see the last of the dog roses. Oh, please, Mr. Pringle. It started to... Over there, that's bracket fungus. Don't touch it. It's deadly poisonous. I'm cold. And there, the rooks. Flying from tree to tree. Swooping and... Oops! Ow! My foot. Ouch, it hurts. Oh... Oh, Mr. Pringle, are you all right? It's, um, it's getting a bit snowy and cold. Can we go home, please? Oh, ouch. Well, yes, that would be a good idea. A very good idea. But I don't think I can walk, children. Dad's barometer was right after all. Oh, I wish he was here with his van to take us home. George! George! Where are you? He can't have gone far in this weather. Is that you, George? I've got a letter for you. Thanks, Pat. Put it in the basket, will you? Now then, look at this. Those little marks in the snow. Tracks. Well, it's not Jess. He hates the snow. I reckon it's a fox, after my prize ends. Best lock them up safely, said Pat. Cheerio. Bye, Pat. The 
snow was getting deeper by the minute, and the road was slippery. Ooh, oh dear. Coming downhill, Pat slid backwards into a field. Oh dear. Luckily, the oh gate no. was open. At last, Pat reached the village. He stopped outside the school to collect young Julian. Hello. Where is everybody? Oh, Pat, said Sarah. The children aren't back yet. They must be lost in the snow with Mr. Pringle. You were right about the snow, Pat. Your old barometer beats my radio. I wish it had been wrong and the children were back safely. Now then, said Mrs. Pottage, they'll be all right with Mr. Pringle. Yon snow's getting awful deep. They should be back by now. It's getting dark, said Ted. Well, the snow stopped at least. Something must have happened to them. Now, I remember Mr. Pringle said they were going as far as Birkhow Bone. They might have taken shelter there, said Ted. I wonder if I could get through with my van. You'll only get stuck. I'll tell you what. Why don't we have a go with my lorry? It's bigger and heavier. We'd have a chance. There's a barn over there, Mr. Pringle. We could go in and shelter. We'd be warmer out of the wind. Well, that's an excellent idea, young Julian. We're getting slower and slower in this snow. Come on, children. Great! Bill's found a light. Now, children, let's settle down. I don't like sitting in the dark. There's plenty of straw. Nice and cozy. What do we do now? Ah, that's better. Nothing much. Ouch! My foot. I don't like the dark. Now for the emergency supplies. Hot cocoa and biscuits. Any idea where we are, Ted? Well, I've seen that tree somewhere before. But everything looks different in all this snow. <laughs> then, they get stuck in a snowdrift. Oh, that's done it. Come on, Pat. We'll have to dig ourselves out. You dig your side, Pat. I'll dig mine. Mm. Oh. Bike. Mm. Won't take long. Mm. Oh. Hot work, this. Ah. E. That should do it. Let's give her a try.
If you're really lost and the weather's getting frosty, don't let chimneys blow on you. Clap your hands and make a rhythm, then we'll find it, we'll win through. Oh no, that sounds bad, said Pat. It's now but a bit of wet got onto the plugs, I bet, said Ted. It'll be all right when I get it dried out. I'm sure I know this lane, said Pat. I'll just have a look. Not that I'm going to see much in the dark. Hmm, better be getting back. What's that? It sounds like... Oh! Oh! It sounds like... singing. Ted! Ted! There's somebody over there, singing. I heard them. Clear as clear. What do you want about Pat singing? How can there be? Listen. You're right. Let's get a move on, said Ted. So, here you are. Wait, it's Pat and Ted. Hooray! 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 Come on, you lot. That's enough singing. We'd better get you home. Take it easy, Mr. Pringle. Take it easy. Like a hand, Mr. Pringle. Easy as you go now. Watch that foot. Thank you, Ted. Last one. Uh-uh! you go. Okay, Ted. Praised. Here they come. I hope they're all right. Katie and Tom, I'm so glad you're safe. What about the others now? What a story young Julian had to tell Sarah. It was great fun, really it was. It's a bad sprain. You will soon be fine with a bit of rest. Well done, Pat and Ted. That was magnificent. But I know one thing. Next time I want to know what the weather's going to do, I'll ask Pat what his barometer has to say before I do anything else. Hear, hear? Me too? Champion, said Ted. Proper champion. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Early in the just as day is dawning, he picks up all the post bags in his van. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Everybody knows his bright red van. All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them Maybe you can never be sure They'll be knock, ring, letters through your door <laughs> Postman Pat